Hello everybody and welcome to this 15-20 minute session um, on how to help your career during the COVID restrictions. My name is Gillian Kendall and I'm a careers and employability advisor. So over these next 15-20 minutes we'll talk about these unprecedented times and how it feels like normal life um, isn't going to resume anytime soon. So it's about thinking creatively, about thinking outside the box, about how you can help yourself during your studies, and also thinking about maybe how you can creatively look at gaining work experience without maybe having to, to leave the home, or to gain maybe some soft skills which are transferable to the employment market and how they will, um, will help you pursuing your future career. So um, life's got to go on and we've got to, to carry on and think, even though there's doom and gloom around within the media saying that obviously jobs are being cut, there's no jobs or anything like that, that actually in July the economy grew by 6% and I think there's indications to say that in August as well it grew. Fair enough, before they'd said that it's grown by 6%, it was extremely low at the time. However, we've got to think about it, that things are progressing, it's moving in the right direction. It's not like it's stagnating, it's not like it's completely crashing. So we've got to ensure that whilst this is, is all going on, that we're um, ensuring that we take control of our destiny and we think about um, how we can improve that to ensure that we can sell that to employers maybe a year or six months down, down the line. So, like I say, the economy has, has increased and um, the labour market information from um, some research that was conducted by the Institute of Student Employers in conjunction with ADCAS, which is the Association of Graduate Careers Advisory Service, um, looked into the impact of COVID on the large uh, graduate recruiters. And employers have indicated that recruitment it, um, is going to be down, that they're going to recruit 12% less graduates and they're looking at roughly 40% less internships, placements and apprentices. So obviously there's a reduction in the amount of recruitment that's taking place. However, we've also got to look at on that and say, right, it's a reduction of 12% for graduates. However, employers are still recruiting. And again, with regards to placements, you know, that information isn't, isn't the best. However, it's not saying that employers aren't going to be taken on. They still need their future talent and you've got to still bear that in mind and think about um, that in the short term and maybe again slightly in the longer term things are going to be impacted but it's about how you're going to give yourself the best chance moving forward. So the aim of the session is then like I say roughly short 15 minutes to consider about what you can actually do within these social distancing restrictions. So within careers, you know, it could feel like it's it's totally overwhelming at the moment and it's it's a complete minefield about where to look for work again because of the negativity that is within the um the press. So what I would say to you is to consider coming to careers and utilizing either the 20 minute appointments, the short mini appointments that you can maybe slot into your um, lectures or consider booking a 45 minute appointment with a careers advisor where we can really scrutinize your career um, plans and your career options and then maybe conduct um, critiques of your application form and conduct a mock interview. So you can do all of that via career edge, but you can also go on to um, you can email UCAN Careers and somebody can make that appointment for you or you can telephone UCAN Careers. Another good idea would be also to follow us on um, Twitter and Facebook. So the, the first thing to then consider with regards to um, what you can do now with these restrictions is then to, to look at webinars because a lot of organisations are getting a lot of personnel within their organisations to talk about their career journey, to talk about um, also what's happening within um, their business, um, what strengths they've got, you know, any particular funding that they've um, successfully bid for and 
um, I'm secured and, and they're talking about this on webinars. They're giving you more insight into the, um, their organisations than they were previously doing because obviously more of their staff are, are working from home. And so it's, it's about thinking, well, you know, generally this would be the significant recruitment um, season for graduates and, and placements. So, you know, it's, it's about showcasing that in different formats. It would normally be on their premises, but they're doing that um, by conducting loads of, of different webinars. So look out for that. Look out for the companies that you would maybe um, want to work for. Go on LinkedIn and follow those particular companies or, or personnel. Um, even consider professional bodies and look at what um, what webinars they're doing and um, highlighting information with regards to your industry and your sector. So next thing is then to consider about doing other courses. Now, it seems extremely silly considering, obviously, you're, you're on a degree. However, it's to think about maybe short additional courses that you could be doing at this moment in time. And again, as a student, you've got the availability and opportunity to um, sign up to, to LinkedIn learning courses. And these can then um, automatically go onto your LinkedIn profile. And it's then generating that AI technology to include you in various um, searches and to get your notoriety um, built up. There is also the opportunity of maybe to do like short, free um, virtual courses via um, Open University or also the virtual college. So consider those as an addition to your, um, to your degree. Um, one of the um, hard skills that employer is, says for them to fill is um, advanced IT skills. And an organisation um, within the government, they, they've come up with the, the skills toolkit. And within this, it stipulates about um, they're giving training online to do um, C++ and Python. And this is quite a lot of organisations are looking for these particular skills, but there's also other software skills to do with um, you know motivation and confidence presenting um, different things like that that could really help you so I would suggest going on to the skills um, toolkit for um, on the government's website or then um, looking at the virtual college or the open university to do these short um, um, employability courses so um, moving on from the um, courses that you could be doing to complement your degree, there's also virtual events that are taking place. So as a careers um, service, we are going to be running a lot of virtual um, insight sessions, but also virtual career fairs. So, so that's one way for you to network with employers virtually um, and get an idea if you're in your first year of maybe what companies you could approach in your third year year or it's maybe that now in your second year you're considering a placement and this would would then help is, is networking and having this um insight into uh, the industry so i would also say look out for different conferences that are available through professional bodies um, but also again through linkedin you can see um, various companies that are maybe doing some training sessions that you can actually get involved in it's all about doing your research and having a look at what's out there but virtual events like this are good at building your network getting linked for maybe then when you're going to um, when when you're then looking for work the next thing is to then consider doing um, and being involved in vlogs blogs and forums so you could be setting up your own own vlog um, so maybe setting up a user guide um, that could be to do with a particular package or something that maybe you've even designed or it could be something to do with, um, I don't know, there's a whole host of different things that you could then get involved in doing like user guides or demonstrating your knowledge in other ways, which could help build your profile. Um, it could be that maybe you want to, to write a blog. So statistics from Omnicore. Um, in 2019 state that there are 500 million blogs with 2 million blogs happening in a day. 
Tumblr is the most popular with 440 million blogs. So some people profit from blogging, but it's only very few. So it says that um, research suggests that to make a statement that um, is related to the work that you could be doing, it's a good starting point whilst you're, um, whilst you're at home. So also, um, like as far as um, blogs, um, and vlogs. So the vlogging is 2 billion active YouTube users with 1 billion hours of YouTube content is watched per day. And YouTube is the second most visited site in the world. So, you know, when bearing that in mind, your reach could be extremely significant. But if you're going to be using it as far as trying to, to build a profile professionally, you need to ensure that you're keeping it professional. Now, obviously, if you're doing something that is, is going to be um, focused towards a particular age bracket, you know, you might want to change your pitch of, of that particular um, that particular information. However, you still need to be keeping it professional because obviously it's on this open form or forum and employers will be able to Google this and see what, what you are presenting. As far as forums, you might want to get involved in those because you might um, be able to help people who are discussing certain things. You might be able to interject and add to those particular things um, on those forums. But again, you've got to be mindful to keep it professional. It's a good way to boost your notoriety and your visibility, but obviously it's got to be professional. So I would suggest to you that you need to um, be aware of your social media footprint and, you know, you need to ensure that it's not going to be detrimental to your future career. So as far as um, internships, so obviously these have been running for many years and it's whereby you go in and you get a, a taste and a feel of, of what an organisation is about. And by and large, these are, um, are paid opportunities. Now, obviously, when the pandemic hit, then these had to turn to virtual internships. So some organisations will be asking you to do um, work for, for free. And obviously it's to ensure that this is something that is within your limits. They're not putting too much pressure on you to do too much and to ensure that this is something that's going to complement your CV. Some organisations do actually charge for you to do virtual internships and that's not necessarily anything that I would condone but it's then thinking of, of maybe ways that you could help a charity do maybe some um, some work on their web page maybe or there's all, all other things that maybe you can then get involved in or you might even be able to help a charity on their telephone helpline and you could do that at home or there might even be working call centres that again you could do at home um, and doing that over the phone and remotely or doing in, um, their virtual chat there is still things out there so I would um, ask you to then um, consider consider those opportunities there is also competitions that are run within professional bodies which is something that um, you can then consider being involved in sometimes this has got to be uh, run in conjunction with your academics or it could be something that you maybe want to do it individually or you could do it as a, a group with your fellow students and you could get in, involved in these competitions and if you think about this as far as again your notoriety and the things to put on your CV with regards to that passion and motivation with regards to your, your field of study and where you see your career going then this is an ideal opportunity to get involved and to, to get your presence known within your particular area. So I would say to start to have a look at these to see whether it's just something you can do individually or whether it's something you can do then with your fellow students. So as far as then UCLAN's um, clubs and societies, so you might be in your final year or you might actually be in your first year. It doesn't matter. There are clubs and societies that are open to UCLAN students and they are um, like run and um, organised via the Students' Union. So I would then encourage you to, to 
uh, contact the Students' Union to find out what clubs and societies are available. Employers that like to look at the, the rounding of a particular em employee that they're considering and they want to see that, yes, you've got the skills, you've got the knowledge, you've got the experience, but they also want to see that you're doing things that are outside of work. They could be commonalities that you've got within the team or it might be something that you do some charity work and that's something that's um, close to the heart of that particular organisation. It might be then that you've got particular skills that you could do um, like team building events and employers want, want to see that, that it's not just all about work, work, work. It's also about these activities that you maybe do and that could be something that builds on your resilience because you do these activities outside of, of work and obviously when you've then had a stressful day, you go to these activities and, and, and it helps you um, be resilient within your home life and also then um, your work life. So consider clubs and societies at UCLan and how they can also benefit you now um, during these COVID times and what you could then be doing online or maybe even you might be able to get together in small groups. Again, you'd, you'd have to look into that and research that. But again, employers do look look at, at that, um, what's going on outside of studies and home life um, positively. So organisations are still hiring. You know, what I would say to you at the moment is to update your CV. So don't leave it till till the last minute and be panicking about that you've got gaps in your CV as far as skills, as far as experience. Start to look at it now. Start early and think about what it is that you could be doing now to help you moving forward. I would start to think about a covering letter as well, because quite a number of employers will ask you to upload your CV, but they'll also ask for a covering letter. Do you know how to structure a covering letter? Do you know what what needs to be involved in a covering letter? So we've got Career Edge, which can help you with, with all of these things with regards to your CV and also your covering letter. LinkedIn is also a really good resource with roughly 656 million um, users globally on LinkedIn. So it's one way to connect to people, building your networks, but also finding out about companies and what they're up to at the moment. So you also need to be researching companies and your sector. And that's something that you can easily do from the comfort of your own home. You don't have to leave anywhere. You can just start to, to Google and start to look about what opportunities are currently out there and then about applying for that and to, to make sure that you're making your application um, the best it can be to ensure that you can sell yourself within the work environment. So that's the end of my presentation. I'll stop recording now and I'll then take any questions. Many thanks.